Here I've prepared a couple sample significant figure calculations. What's important with these is you start with understanding the rules and what they are and why they are what they are behind significant figures. So if you want to, there's a link in the video below that you can click on if you haven't done that yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through some sample calculations. If you'd like to try them, there's also a link to the presentation that you're about to go through. Uh, if you want to try them first and come back and look at the answers, you can go ahead and pause the video now and do that. So there's two steps to these problems. So when you're doing a measurement times a measurement or a measurement plus a measurement, you want to do two things. Like you would do in a math class, you're going to take 28.04, you're going to multiply it by 3.1, and your calculator is going to give you some answers. So when I plug this into a calculator, I get 86.924. Okay. The second thing you want to do is you then want to apply the rules into how you want to round that so that you properly reflect your measurements. Now for multiplying and dividing, you count how many sig figs you have. So here we have four sig figs. And here we have two sig figs, which is a pretty easy thing. It's just how many numbers you have. Sometimes the zeros count, sometimes they don't. So when you multiply or divide, whichever of the two measurements has the fewer number of sig figs is how many that your final answer will have as well. So my final answer can only have two sig figs. So if I count, once I get past the six, I need to get rid of the rest of those numbers. So I'm going to round this 6 up to 87, throw my units on there for centimeters squared, and that then, this would be how I would figure out what my final answer would be. Now this 87 properly analyzes how many sig figs I had in my measurements to begin with and reflects the quality of instrument that I used. The 86.924 would be correct in a math class, but this is what's correct in a measurement sense or in a science class. Okay, we're adding and subtracting. So here we have 40.040 plus 120.1. We don't need to plug this into a calculator. It's 041.061. So that's what I would get plugging it into a calculator. Now what I want to do is I want to look at the different places. So in adding and subtracting, we're going to look at the last significant digit. So the 0 for the 40.040 and the 1 for the 120.1. We want to think of this like this. This zero has some uncertainty, so it's really 40.0439 to 40.041. And this is about 120.0 to 120.2. And so that large range in this tenths place means that we're uncertain in this tenths place in our answer. And so therefore, that place has to be where our final rounding occurs. And so we would actually take this and we would round it to be 160.1 milliliters as our final answer for our measurement calculation. So whatever the worst, best place is, is what place you go to on your answer. Okay? Alright, multiplying. So, that's thrown up. Alright, so multiplying. So here we have to be careful. These zeros are not significant. A lot of people will confuse this because there's a decimal and the zeros are to the right. It's not where you are in relation to the decimal. It's, is there a decimal, and are the zeros to the right of the numbers? So this would just be two sig figs, and this would be four sig figs. So if we go ahead and plug that into a calculator, the calculator tells us that it is 6.3941 inches squared. And then we're going to round that so that it's only two sig figs, just like this. So 6.3, we have a 9 next to it. So we'd have 6.4 inches squared as our final answer for our measurement. Okay. All right, divided goes by the same rules as we do for multiplying. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 sig figs. Here we have two sig figs. Okay, so 287.4 divided by 41 comes out to be 7.00975609 grams per centimeter cubed. And we want to round that to two sig figs. So we're going to change that to be 7.0 grams per centimeter cubed. And we have one more with subtraction here, 147 grams minus 0 0.00498 grams. So we're going to end up here with 
99502 grams. If I'm doing that correctly in my head there. And for the rounding, we need to look at place. So this is good to the ones place. This is good to the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousands place. So very precise measurement there by decimal place. And so our answer can only be good to the to the lesser of those two measurements, which, is, which would be the 147. So we have to have our answer stop at this, which means our final answer would be what we started with, 147 grams. So if that makes you uncomfortable, just try and think of this like this. If you were to have, you know, if I were to come in and give you $5,000, and then someone were to like, or I'm sorry, not $5,000, if I were to give you about $5,000, and someone were to give you a quarter, you wouldn't change your perception of how much money you have by the quarter because it's so small compared to the uncertainty in the original measurement that it's not going to affect things.